uh, this is a view to show you how the most of the geomaterials which are man made looks like. Uh, we have been talking about blast furnace slag, we have been talking about the silica fumes and so on in the previous lecture. And uh, one obvious question is if you want to understand how to use a material for it for a specific uh, project, you have to look into its microscopic structure. So, we were quite uh, excited to see that uh, silica fumes look like this. Remember some time back I said that these are very uh, light materials, the specific gravity would be 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So, transportation is a big issue I think we discussed in the class. Why this happens? Because if you look at the surface of these particles, these are very furry structures, you know, they have protrusions on the surface uh, and these protrusions or the furs, uh, they create these materials very light and air bone. So, one of the major issues associated with silica fumes is that uh, this material becomes air bone and people inhale, inhale it. And because of high activity of silica, if it goes in your lungs, what it will do? It will suck all the water from the lungs and it will produce uh, dead cells in the lungs, you know, it could be lung cirrhosis. So, these are very, very hazardous materials. So, industrialization versus health of the people and the environmental chaos, if you are trying to understand these type of things become useful. We were dealing with the blast furnace slag also in a big way because uh, in uh, some of my student theses, uh, we have been talking about uh, blast furnace slag as a man-made resource and rather than mining for calcium from the mines, I wanted to use the calcium which is present in the blast furnace slag. So, we were thinking of a process by which the calcium oxide can be extracted from the slags, clear. Now, this is a very philosophical world. I mean, I might not be able to take out calcium oxide, but what I can do is I can I can break calcium in the ionic form and I can remove cations that is calcium ions from this system and induce them into the marine clays. So on this concept, Ganraj has a patent uh, where we have used a new material for stabilizing the marine clays. And if you follow his thesis, uh, you will realize he has uh, published a paper also on this, I think. These are the materials which are non-chemical stabilizers. Because nowadays, you can't insert a chemical inside the ground. That self is hazardous. So, in the long run, these chemicals would react with the groundwater and they will get transported from one place to another place. So, these type of themes are coming in uh, ground modification, uh, soil augmentation, soil rejuvenation. And remember my dream project, uh, this man-made soils. So, I wanted to create man-made soils. I do not want to use natural soils because these resources are quite limited now. So, how to convert all these industrial byproducts and the waste material into a resource is a challenge which we are trying to address and work on. So, the blast furnace slag uh, normally looks very angular. Remember, this comes out of the steel making process and then once you grind it, pulverize it, it becomes GGBFS. That is a ground granulated blast furnace slag which is cement and very active cement and you can create PPC out of it by substituting 30, 40 percent of the material in OPC. Now, I will discuss about the morphological characterization of uh, geomaterials. Morphological characterization is basically shape, size, dimensions, regularity, irregularity. So, normally morphological characterization is done uh, by using two techniques. One is two dimensional technique and another one is three dimensional technique. And you will be surprised to know that uh, we have shown that shear wave velocity and the liquefaction potential of the sands or the shear strength depends upon the morphological features. So, these are the thoughts which take the subject ahead of what exists. So, the standard sands which you are using and which you are teaching to undergraduates by saying that these are standard spherical materials, uh, you never question that how spherical they are. We question this and to our surprise we realize that these standard sands which you use as a spherical materials are truly like this. So, uh, 
one of them is a perfect sphere. These are as flaky as possible. So, these are the two dimensional sections you take the particle and cut it and then you take the images uh, you know micrographically and the material looks like this. So, SS1 is the uh, coarse sand, SS3 is the fine sand and uh, these are the cenospheres which have peculiar characteristics. In 3D if you do the imaging uh, these are known as optical micrographs. Uh, this is how the sands and the glass bead looks like. What we have done from this information is uh, we went too much into the morphological characterization of the materials. Each grain has to be photographed. So, what you are seeing over here is this is one of the grains of the sand on which you are working. And then uh, we inscribe as many circles as possible. It is a game of patience. You have to sit down and analyze each of the image which you take. And then one circle you have to subs which subscribes the particle. And once these dimensions are known, you can define the sphericity, roundness and regularity of the particle. So, this is the best way to characterize the morphology of the materials at uh, microscopic level all right. So, I mean I would not go into the details of all these things if you are interested please read the papers which are written by uh, Anjan Patel and uh, Prasad Bhattake. We have used this concept also to define the uh, crushability of the sands, crushability of the particles or the crushing strength of the particles what they call it as. Crushing strength has a lot of application in different industries right now. I mean you should appreciate one fact that industry understands that we are the experts in the minerals and soils. So, they approach you having full faith that you are the only one who can solve their problems. So, where these type of issues become useful in the halogy, yes. Sir, if during site investigation the data is very erratic. So, can we use like for a certain uh, type of area the morphology uh, of the sands we can say it, it more or less will be same. So, can we use it, uh, use this morphological characterization to predict the behavior of my like given area engineering behavior? It depends upon whether you are having a outlook of uh, macroscopic uh, models or microscopic models. Yeah, so this is an interesting question that how particles of random sizes and shapes would create a matrix through which let us say which can be compacted through which the percolation of water may take place or through which the shear wave velocities will travel, heat will travel, contaminants will travel and so on, bacteria will travel. So, these are the questions which you have to really sit down and plan the crushability. I just have to focus on engineering behavior, microscopic, mechanical, like can uh, for a given area from morphology point of view can be predict. Yeah, like so if uh, ground answer is, answer is simple, if, if the sphericity is very close to unity, one, you know that these soils are going to liquefy very easily because you cannot compact them. So, everything gets related to the RD value, relative density, E max E min, all right. And not only to that, even your friction angles, internal friction angles are also a function of uh, the true friction angle plus dilation angle plus minus depends upon how you are uh, defining this uh, what you call it as interest uh, no uh, how, do, how you are defining that uh, true friction angle would depend upon the dilation angle and uh, the real friction angle asperities sorry angle of asperities. So, angle of asperities have to get added up to the friction angle or it has to be subtracted depending upon how the shearing process is taking place. Uh, these are the micro detailing of the materials uh, which conventional geomechanics also talks about. This is what R and D is where you go too much into the details of the material and try to see this. Yeah, but these are very simple ideas, but later on we realize that they have a lot of application in the stream. I might have done several projects from you know the companies which make glues 
adhesives toothpaste different types of uh, uh, bumps which are packed in the tubes because ultimately it's all allergy is it not different types of uh, what is putties which you use for sealing the cracks of the, of the in the concrete and so on it becomes very interesting whether this uh, morphology data can be used for already existing structures structures I mean, of i mean for if they are prone to liquefaction or yeah something. there are several papers if you check it on net where uh, now people are realizing how shear wave velocities would depend upon the three parameters sphericity roundness and regularity so truly speaking these three parameters are defining the morphology of the material quantified form so vs is a function of s r and epsilon so rd is a function of all these see there is a shift in the concepts which you have been studying in the basic soil mechanics now i am sure that uh, somebody must be working or must have worked on rd as a function of all these parameters not only e max e min because e max e min would have been a gross injustice with the material i hope you can realize so when you redefine the systems <coughs> and the interesting thing is those who are designing chips for you know ic circuits so where you are packing the silica particles so what cylinders do it at macro level compaction where yeah, the compaction is going out at nano level and they are also spherules spherical particles so how do you compact the spherical particles at that level and what type of distortions and defects can come in the system it is a very big subject where where electronics guys have to sit with us to learn the theory of compaction theory of <laughs> theory of packing theory of packing of the nanoparticles because see, we are experts we have learned maximum you know how the particles can be packed how they can be compacted yes if they are round like the void ratio can't be less than 0.33435 so is there some way alteration like if the if it's not perfectly round that you can take below it yeah i mean like once you understood the concepts how are you going to give a solution is your prerogative i don't know whether you guys have realized this or not there is a new concept in the market uh, liquefaction is being tackled by purging gas bubbles they create a specific size of bubbles in the soils which are liquefiable so what these bubbles are going to do they act as a springs between the grains of the sands so when earthquake comes you know as if you have introduced some sort of a shock absorbers and hence the particles are liquefied so there is lot of papers which are being published in this concepts <coughs>